Thank you for joining me here at Astrophotography Japan. Galaxies are a popular target for deep sky imaging. You can go after them with RGB color filters and luminance if you have a monochrome camera. But since I started astrophotography about three years ago, I have always done one-shot color camera imaging. And I have learned that the right filter choice is based on target, local light pollution, moon phase, portal class, and other perhaps less critical considerations. Choosing the right filter is a matter of intuition, experience, and experimentation. Of course, we are limited by what we happen to have in our equipment arsenal, and always wanting more. In this video, I will share with you the results of imaging the Andromeda Galaxy under Bortle Class 7 Plus skies using two filters consecutively on the same night. One is a fairly typical UV IR cut filter that I purchased from Zerboni and reviewed it previously. And the other filter comes from Antlia, the quad band filter. The transmittance profile of these filters are shown here. They are quite different, but both are broadband filters. The quad band specifically is a bit unusual in that it is designed to block much of LED-based city lights, but also to capture light out into the near infrared. Of course, all stars emit a great deal of infrared light, which most CMOS camera sensors will pick up, even though the light may not be visible to our eyes. On the other hand, UV IR cut filters are designed for collecting only the visible wavelengths. Previously, I have published a few videos comparing results of different filters on star images and nebulae. The recent episode number 36, like this video, also employed the Antlia quadband filter in an attempt to capture dark nebula targets. On this night of imaging, I used the Astronomics Astrotech AT60 ED telescope at 288 mm focal length to capture the Andromeda Galaxy. Tracking and guiding were controlled by the ASI Air and AM5 mount from ZWO. The imaging was done in the backyard of my home on a beautifully clear night after the waxing crescent moon had set with almost no clouds and pretty darn good seeing conditions for a rather warm 28 degrees centigrade night near to Tokyo, Japan. I used my new ASI 585MC one-shot color camera. On this warm night, the sensor was constantly between 32 and 34 degrees centigrade all night long. So dark and bias frames and dithering was essential to minimize thermal background noise. Let's talk about the study plan on the night of September 7th when I captured all this data. In part one of this video, we will talk about a series of photos taken at various exposure times for both filters from 20 seconds up to 120 seconds. I analyzed these images using ASI Studio for average star sizes. The reason I am interested in star size analysis is because the quad band filter passes high wavelength infrared light which has a side effect of increasing star sizes on your images. I wanted to see how much it bloats the stars relative to a UV IR cut filter. And in the second stage of this study, I imaged the Andromeda galaxy with both filters, capturing as much data as possible while it rose above the rooftops of the surrounding houses in my backyard. The actual imaging times for these filters during that night are displayed at the bottom of the slide. For fun, I also included a combination image with 200 minutes of integration time. Later we'll have a look at the starless images and final images to see if there are any noticeable differences. This is the ASI Studio Benchtop application from ZWO. It is a multi-purpose software that I primarily use for reviewing my FITS files prior to stacking. Here is the ASI fits view function seen at the bottom of the menu page. If you click on this open button and select a fits file in any raw data file folder, the contents of that file are displayed like this. You can then easily scroll through all of the subframes and examine them for tracking defects, clouds, airplanes, satellite trails, or other issues. Do you see this icon here at the bottom? This is the star size analysis icon. When you click on it, 
Some algorithm looks closely at a high percentage of the stars in the field of view and makes a calculation, revealing an average star size value at the bottom of the screen. I believe the number in parentheses is a translation of that arbitrary unitless number into actual arc seconds of sky. This is a really cool feature and a big improvement on the previous application version for calculating star sizes. So armed with this tool, let's dive into the data. Within a set of subframes, like the 10 quad band subframes shown here, the star sizes and calculation values show remarkable consistency. They deviated from 5.59 to only 5.68 across this entire group. That is less than a 2% difference between the high and low values. The 20-second exposure group of the Antlia quadband filter data had an average value of 5.62. The 30-second and 60-second exposure groups had very similar average star size values, but the 120-second image set had star sizes that appeared to be measurably larger with a value of 5.74. Visually, I think you can notice a gradual brightening of the starry background among these single exposure subframes from the top to bottom images, as well as an increasing intensity of the Andromeda galaxy as well. Interestingly, with longer exposures, it appears that more and more stars reach some threshold point of visibility, and hence the number of counted stars also increases. I also noticed that the brightest stars were excluded from the calculation, suggesting that the algorithm only determines star sizes between some lower and upper limit. What determines those limits is not clear, but somehow it is automatically assigned. Values for the set of UV IR cut filter images were also analyzed and displayed here in a similar way. But what is most interesting is a comparison of these two sets against each other. Here you can see that comparison. Included are representative single subframes and the average star size group values. The highest number from the Zivoni UVIR cut filter data at 120 seconds exposure time, an average value of 4.99, is still lower than the lowest value of the Antlia quadband set, even at only 20 seconds exposure. You can also get a good feel for the remarkable ability of the quad band filter to cut through the ambient light pollution of the city of Yokohama. Keep in mind also that the quad band images were taken earlier in the night, mostly before midnight, whereas the UV IR cut filter images were taken during the late night at the darkest hours. Now, some of you may be asking, what's the big deal with star sizes? But I think, depending upon your level of sophistication with image processing, star sizes could be a significant issue for you. Expert imagers with access to PixInsight or AstroPixel Processor or other such high-end software can rely on star reduction and other subroutines to control star sizes. I use GIMP. I am no expert in processing. However, I often use StarNet++ to remove stars prior to processing and then add them back later at a balanced or desired intensity. But I have encountered targets where star removal can lead to undesirable image artifacts. So I think that paying attention to star sizes during deep sky imaging is good standard practice for many of us. For the second part of this filter comparative study, I selected 60 seconds as the exposure time to use. I collected and chose 100 good subframes from each imaging run performed with each filter and used them for stacking and developing the galaxy image. The process I used is as follows. Image stacking was done in serial. Background gradient extraction was done using Graxpert. Star removal was performed with StarNet++ and image development was achieved by using GIMP. Let's first look at the images after star removal to focus on the structure and captured details of the Andromeda galaxy. Graxpert automatically does an RGB color balance along with the light pollution gradient removal. After Graxpert and stretching in GIMP, these are the raw colors that came across with each of the filters. 
Other than the color, they do look fairly similar, but clearly there are some differences in the finer details. By the way, I also specifically did not apply any denoise software to these photos to retain the true images for comparison. In my opinion, the UV IR cut photo displays a little more contrast, sharpness, detail, or resolution. I do not actually know how to describe it, but I suspect that the high wavelength of infrared not only blows up star images, but in a similar way probably limits or reduces overall target resolution. On the next slide, I added back the stars, adjusted the color, and custom optimized each of the images independently. I'll give you a few moments to examine these photos. For imaging, I use the ASI 585MC planetary camera, which has a pixel size of 2.9 microns. Also, the theoretical resolution of the OTA setup I used, as determined by Astronomy Tools website, is 2.08 arc seconds per pixel. And finally, let me show you a few close-ups. This is the quad band filter final image with 100 minutes of integration time. This one and the next image that I will present were also touched up with topaz denoise to gently smooth some of the pixelated features. Here are the UV IR cut filter results. The image also contains 100 minutes of integration time. For the Andromeda Galaxy, I have to admit, this is my personal favorite. I like the UV IR cut filter imaging results slightly better. To be honest, I have no idea if I can expect to see similar results if I do this comparison on other galaxy targets. But regardless, I think these data have satisfied my curiosity, and for me, it was a useful comparison to look at the performance of a typical UV IR cut filter versus the Antlia quadband filter on a deep sky galaxy target, our neighboring Andromeda galaxy. I hope you agree. Thank you for watching. Here in Yokohama, I am JP Astro Guy. My name is Paul Cheesegel, and I am an astrophotographer. <laughs>